On today's menu, we have this integral involving an infinite product of cosine functions. That indeed sounds appetizing, but the first thing that comes to mind when you look at the integrand is the question of whether or not this infinite product term even converges. And if it does converge, then what does it converge to? So that seems like a nice place to start the analysis. And we'll consider the product, the finite product that is, from k equals 1 to n, of cosine of x by 2 to the k. And then we'll study the limit of this thing as n tends to infinity. So expanding the product gives me cosine of x by 2 times the cosine of x by 4 times the cosine of x by 8 and so on and so forth and the stops at cosine of x by 2 to the n. So it doesn't look like I have any patterns here. But what if I could convert the right-hand side into some kind of telescoping product? And what does that even mean? What am I trying to say? Well, what I mean is, like in the case of series expansions, if I have the sum of the difference of two things that are sort of consecutive things, then expanding the series can yield some nice cancellations. So translating this into product language, what I want is the product of two sort of consecutive things that are in ratio. That way I can have the cancellation similar to the kind I can get in a telescoping series. So that's what I meant by what I, that's what I meant when I said telescoping product, sort of telescoping product. So my goal is to turn everything on the right hand side into a ratio of functions. And I can reference some trigonometry for that. We could invoke the double angle formula for the sine function because sine 2x is a product that equals 2 times sine x times the cosine of x. And I'm interested in the cosine part here, so that means the cosine of x can be written as sine 2x divided by 2 sine x. And this, this looks like it could work here. So let me return to my product from k equals 1 to n. This would be equal to uh, the cosine of x by 2 turns into the sine of 2 times x by 2, which is just x, divided by twice the sine of x by 2. And we're multiplying this by the sine of x by 2 divided by twice the sine of x by 4 times the sine of x by 4 divided by twice the sine of x by 8. And this pattern continues till we get to sine of x by 2 to the n minus 1 divided by 2 times sine x by 2 to the n. Okay, cool. So like I said, I could get the cancellations similar to the kind I would get for telescoping series. And indeed, that is the case because we have these wonderful cancellations taking place and they continue all the way up to this thing here with only the first and the last term surviving. So the product from k equals 1 to n of cosine of x by 2 to the k equals the sine of x divided by how many 2s are there? There are n number of 2s. So I have 2 to the n times the sine of x by 2 to the n. Okay, cool. And I'm interested in the limit of this thing as n tends to infinity. So let me just apply the limit now as n tends to infinity. And we get on the right-hand side. The sine term is independent of the index variable n, so I have sine x times the limit as n tends to infinity of 2 to the negative n divided by sine of x times 2 to the negative n. Now, as n tends to infinity, 2 to the negative n goes to 0. And in the denominator, we have sine of 0, which is, again, 0. So I have a 0 by 0 form, and I'll apply L'Hopital's rule, giving me the limit as n tends to infinity of negative 2 to the negative n times log 2 divided by, now the cosine 
of x times 2 to the negative n. And because of the chain rule, I have x times 2 to the negative n times log 2 with a negative sign. Okay, so there's some cancellation here. And the negatives cancel out as well, giving me sine x by the surviving x term times the limit as n tends to infinity of 1 by cosine x times 2 to the negative n. Okay, so applying the limit gives me sine x by x times 1 by cosine 0, which is 1. So all of this means that the infinite product over the positive integers k of cosine of x divided by 2 to the k equals sine x by x, which is beautiful. So now I can return to the integral, and we can write this as the integral from 0 to pi by 4 of x times the product, which sorted out to sine x by x. And we have some cancellation here, meaning that i equals the integral from 0 to pi by 4 of sine x dx, which by the fundamental theorem of engineering sorts out to the integral from 0 to pi by 4 of x dx. Wait, I am yet to make a video proving the fundamental theorem of engineering, and I believe it would be insulting to invoke such a beautiful result in mathematics without making a proof video prior to solving any integral on my channel using that beautiful result. So we're going to have to try something else. Unfortunately, we're integrating from 0 to pi by 4. If this was an integral from 0 to pi by 2, we could have invoked the beta function, and that would have been it. But we're going to have to adopt an alternative approach here. So the simplest approach is often the best one. So we'll define an integral function. I have some parameter alpha as the integral from 0 to pi by 4 of sine alpha x. And the plan is to differentiate under the integral sign using Feynman's trick. OK, so the ghost of Feynman just called, and he told me not to go through with that example. OK, Feynman's technique, so you're the boss. So let's just deus ex machina this and call it negative cosine x, with the limits being 0 and pi by 4, meaning that we have cosine 0 minus cosine pi by 4. And recent sightings have reported that cosine 0 is 1. And similar reports suggest that cosine pi by 4 is 1 by root 2. So we're just going to believe them. And that's what the target integral sorts out to. I hope you enjoyed the video. Be sure to like and subscribe. Thank you. See you next time.